I want to start with this 23andMe hack, if you don't mind. Um, according to reports, this was largely due to what they call password recycling. People using the same password on 23andMe as they've used on other sites. Um, how would you describe that? Is that, you know, user error? I mean, how, how should we look at a hack like this? Yeah, well, first, we're going to learn a lot more about what the hack was, how it was perpetrated over the course of time. Usually, only a limited amount of information and a limited amount of accuracy is available uh, when you first learn about a breach. The truth is that that type of issue, password reuse, having vulnerabilities on systems which you know about, which you just haven't had time to patch, having these, these sorts of lackadaisical security practices are what account for actually a vast majority of breaches. So when we're talking on the, the personal level, our personal data, you said that was lackadaisical on, on the part of 23andMe. What can we all do to better protect ourselves or what should we be looking for from companies for better protection? Is it about two-factor authentication? Is it about something else? What are we looking for? Well, there's a couple of things that you should do to better protect yourself. The first is make sure you're very thoughtful about what information you're putting online. Any and all information which you put online, and this should come as no surprise to many of us, uh, is available. It's available for the corporations to use, the corporations with which you share it, and it's frequently available to the people that they share it with. And sometimes those sharing mechanisms are, you know, the selling of your information, the trading of information. It could be business partners. It could also be hackers, which uh, break into systems and access this type of information. So I'd say, first and foremost, uh, make sure you're thoughtful about the information you put online. And secondly, make sure you're doing business with companies that are investing in their cybersecurity. This is a very big issue. Uh, just recently, we had rulings from uh, the SEC and enforcement actions from the SEC, uh, which are going to require companies to be much more transparent about their cybersecurity practices okay. and their breaches. And I think this is going to lead to improved uh, security uh, risk management. Yeah, I think we all hope that. Um, let's talk more about the broader landscape. We haven't talked to you in a bit. Um, since the last time we spoke, the Israel-Hamas war started. Give us a sense when it comes to the corporate level. Are you seeing more threats come from the Middle East region? And just give us a sense of the general landscape. Well, certainly there was an uptick in threat activity as the conflict uh, erupted. And we saw online hacktivists, you saw a lot of uh, motivation, and you are seeing targeted attacks against different government and non-government sites, sometimes organizations supporting one particular uh, uh, cause. And so none of this is news. I think the bigger trend, the bigger issue that we're concerned about, which has been occurring over the last several uh, quarters, is the democratization of the threat environment. So we operate in a flat world online and threats uh, or vulnerabilities rather, which took a long time to, ex uh, to exploit, which only very sophisticated hackers could do, are now being democratized, meaning you're seeing less capable hackers able to download the attack code used to exploit these vulnerabilities and use them themselves. So what used to require a very sophisticated attacker, perhaps a nation state, uh, is now being executed by online criminals uh, and hacktivists alike.